causes edema. What causes high hydrostatic pressure, as I already discussed with you, with inflammation and uh, heart failure, if you remember, and what causes low oncotic pressure, this is low proteins. So, edema can be because of kidney disorders. Why kidney disorders can lead to edema? Because we have proteinuria, with proteinuria we are losing proteins and this decreases plasma oncotic pressure. That's why too many times kidney disorders we can have with, for example, edema. Second, very important also reason when plasma proteins are not produced. One of the target organ where proteins must be produced this is liver. Yes, we know that albumins and proteins are synthesized in the liver. And we know that liver disorders can be associated with edema. And the reason for edema, again, is low oncotic pressure. So let's say that low oncotic pressure because of liver disorders, because of kidney disorders, can lead to edema. If we have high hydrostatic pressure, when we can have high hydrostatic pressure? For example, when we have heart failure, yes? When we have heart failure, of course, hydrostatic pressure increases inside the blood vessels and it leads to edema. This is second most common reason for edema. I will show you now. By location, we can divide this. We have generalized edema, what we call anasarca. Anasarca, this is edema everywhere we can have, and most commonly we have local edema. By location, we can divide. For example, we can have periorbital edema. For example, we can have, for example, edema in the lower extremities or upper extremities. So we divide. Also, edema can be pitting and non-pitting. What is the difference? If this is pitting edema, yes, if you compress the skin, it will leave impression and then it will be, of course, smooth. This is pitting edema, yes. Most important to check edema, this is in the morning. Why? Because during the day, the because of gravity, uh, legs are dependent, yes, and of course, swelling more swelling we have at the end of the day, yes? And if patient has edema even in the morning, this is bad sign, yes? Because in the morning, edema must be the lowest. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. As you see here, this is brain edema. Edema we can have everywhere in the brain, in the extremities, um, in any part. And you have to, you must be able to differentiate what is the reason for edema. Uh, this is because of inflammation, because of low oncotic pressure, because of high hydrostatic pressure, or sometimes we have lymphedema because of uh, many, how to say, causes. Now, most important, what I have to discuss with you, this is... One minute. This is thrombosis. We know that for coagulation we need thrombocytes, for coagulation we need specific factors. This is coagulation factors. We have to know that for thrombus formation we need normal coagulation cascade and normal function of thrombocytes. We have to know that for thrombus formation individual thrombocytes must appear with each other. To appear thrombocytes with each other, they need specific glycoproteins. These glycoproteins we call glycoprotein 2B and 3A, as you see. Individual thrombocytes stick with each other by glycoproteins, what we call glycoprotein 2B and 3A. This is very important, but 
the thrombus we don't need we need thrombus to adhere to the endothelium yes to the blood vessels for this adherence we have specific receptors on thrombocytes we have glycoprotein 1b which sticks adheres to von Willebrand's factors which is on endothelial cells again thrombus to adhere to the side of blood vessels they need specific receptors on endothelial cells we have von Willebrand's factor and on thrombocytes we have glycoprotein 1b because if thrombus cannot adhere to the blood vessels this is emboli we know so for thrombus formation they stick with each other with glycoprotein 2b3 and with glycoprotein 1b with one of the factor second it's not sufficient for coagulation also we need specific um, coagulation factors uh, most of them are synthesized in the liver and I will discuss this with you but before I will discuss I want to tell you that if patient has any abnormality in thrombocytes always remember that bleeding time is prolonged if you will see in your blood test coagulation test that bleeding time is prolonged it means that problem is on thrombocytes either we have adherence or adhesion or aggregation defects we have to discuss uh, right now two disorders in which we have adhesion and um, aggregation defects as you see here this is Bernard Solier disorder and Glanzmann's thrombostenia. What is the difference? If this is Glanzmann's thrombostenia, this is genetic disorder in which this glycoprotein 2B and 3A abnormality we have and the problem we have with aggregation of individual thrombocytes. Second disorder, this is Bernard Solier's disorder. In this disorder, glycoprotein 1B abnormality we have. In this case, we have adhesion problem, adhesion of thrombocytes to endocellular cells. Thus, these disorders manifest as bleeding tendency, manifest as microhemorrhages, purpuras, petechias. But if you will order blood tests, only abnormality, what you will see, this is prolonged bleeding time. Partial thromboblasting time will be normal, prothrombin time will be normal, and only abnormality, what you will see, this is prolongation of bleeding time always remember so these two disorders the genetic disorders which you have to know this is Glanzmann's thrombostenia and Bernard Solier's disorder if we want to check if we have any abnormality in the intrinsic or extrinsic pathway in this case we have to be able to read the blood test this is partial thromboblasting time is responsible for intrinsic pathway and Prothrombin time is responsible for extrinsic time. Mm -hmm. Now, this is clotting factors. We have, as I told you, intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. For clotting to occur, most important for intrinsic pathway begins with Hegemon's factor. For Hegemon's factor, this is factor 12. And we have to know that from uh, factor 12, 12A 12 is produced, which acts on factor 11, from factor 11, 11A is produced, and from 11, not 10, it acts on factor 9, 9A is produced, and this 9A finally acts on factor 10. This is common pathway between intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway begins with tissue factor, yes, which is released by mm, damaged endocellular cells. This is tissue factor activates this is factor 7. Factor 7, usually, this is very important, yes, it acts directly and usually activates factor 10. So, on extrinsic pathway usually we have tissue factor we have factor 7 we have factor 10 and from factor 10 all this is the common pathway you have to know that factor 10 then acts on 
prothrombin. Prothrombin is the same as factor 2 and from prothrombin thrombin is formed and then thrombin acts on fibrinogen to produce fibrin what? clot. Why you have to know this? If anybody has abnormality in the intrinsic pathway only PTT is produced. This is partial thromboblastin time. For example, as you see here, factor 8 is also in the intrinsic pathway and if patient has abnormality like hemophilia, we know that in classic hemophilia we have deficiency or abnormality of the factor 8. Factor 8 is in intrinsic pathway, yes, and this leads to only prolongation of partial thromboblastin time. Extrinsic pathway, for example, abnormality, if we have only prothrombin, time will be prolonged. Yes, this is very important what you have to realize. And you have to know that um, factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, and factor 10, this is vitamin K dependent factors. It means that um, vitamin K deficiency can lead to bleeding what tendency because our liver cannot synthesize those factors which is dependent on vitamin K. Follow? Yes. Factor 8, uh, yes, we have an intrinsic pathway. Factor uh, 8 usually acts here directly on factor 10, this is on intrinsic pathway. For hemophilia, we have several types of hemophilia. Classical hemophilia A is factor 8 deficiency, but also we have hemophilia when we have factor 9 deficiency. 9 is also in intrinsic pathway. Hemophilia is X-linked disorder and mm, patient has of course bleeding tendencies and you have to know that uh, many how to say complications is because of this you know, factor uh, how to say 8 or 9 deficiency. Also you have to know that this is very important and you will realize why I'm showing you uh, uh, I'm uh, explaining this. One Wilbrandt's factor has two functions. One main function this is it binds glycoprotein 1B. Agree? Second function of one Wilbrandt's factor is it stabilizes factor what? 8. Follow, follow me. Now, stabilization of the factor 8 depends on one Wilbrandt's factor. If we have disorder, what we call one Wilbrandt's disorder, which is autosomal dominant disorder, in which we have defective one Wilbrandt's factor, patient has bleeding tendency, patient has hemorrhages, purpurous petechias, but you have to know that what will be prolonged in this case? How you will differentiate hemophilia by blood tests only with Wolvian-Brenz disorder? In Wolvian-Brenz disorder, always remember bleeding time and partial thromboblastin time both will be prolonged. Why? Because bleeding time will be prolonged because one will brand factor is responsible uh, for binding to GP1B, agree? And thrombocytes cannot adhere and that's why bleeding time will be prolonged. And second, this stabi factor stabilizes factor 8. Factor 8 is in intrinsic pathway and this is the reason why partial thromboblastin time also will be prolonged. And if you want to differentiate only with first blood test, only PTT is prolonged with hemophilias and bleeding time and PTT is prolonged with one Wilbrandt's disorder. This is autosomal dominant disorder, Wilbrandt's disorder and hemophilia is X-linked. Yes. Partial thromboblastin time usually is uh, responsible uh, for intrinsic coagulation um, pathway, how to say, um, factors, function. If this is prolonged, it means that we have abnormality somewhere in the intrinsic, and, we uh, and when we know which factors are in intrinsic pathways, you already know that if your 
mm, blood test shows that 50 T is pro prolonged. This can be 8 factor, 9, 10. So, bag of matters, this is in intrinsic pathway. But if you have extrinsic, yes, this is factor 10, 7, which is on the extrinsic pathway, yes, of course, you will have prolongation of PT. For example, if we have um, vitamin K deficiency, vitamin K leads to 7, 9, 10 factor formation, yes, both will be prolonged, yes, PT and PTT, yes, so this we have to know. Yes, it was question behind, yeah. That's where you want to repeat. Clotting factors. We have an intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. An intrinsic factor pathway usually starts with factor 12. Factor 12 we call hydrogen factor. Activation of hegemon factor leads to factor 12A formation. 12A acts on factor 11 and 11A is produced. 11A acts on factor 9, not 10, and 9A is produced. And the common pathway between the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways, this is factor 10. From factor 10, both pathway continues as floating pathway. Factor 8 is also in the intrinsic pathway, but it directly acts, as you see here, um, on the intrinsic pathway. And factor 10 then acts on prothrombin. Prothrombin is the same as factor 2. Factor 2A is produced, what we call thrombin. Thrombin then acts on fibrinogen to produce fibrin bands. This is for your coagulation. If this is extrinsic pathway, you have to know that tissue, any endothelial cell injury, any blood vessel trauma leads to expression of tissue factor, which initiates extrinsic coagulation pathway. That's why all disorders, you know, this is general pathology, we don't study uh, det in details disorders, but I have to teach you at least what is the reason for thrombosis, what is the reason for hemorrhages, and briefly some disorders. For example, in hemophilia we have bleeding because of factor 8 deficiency, yes, and this is X-linked disorder, and intrinsic, um, how, how to say, abnormality we have of the intrinsic pathway. In volume disorder, this is autosomal dominant disorder, volume factor deficiency we have, or defective we have, that's why thrombocytes cannot normally adhere to the endothelial cells, and factor 8's half-life is decreased. That's why PTT is also prolonged, yes. Glantzmann's thrombostemia I was discussing with you, and bernard Sawyer's disorder. In this case, we have defects with thrombocyte abrogation or thrombocyte adhesion. You know, from hemodynamic disorders, four disorders, we also discussed. Also in your book it's written, and this is very interesting disorder, we have immune thrombocytopenic purpura. We have disorder in which this is two types we have. One type which occurs in childhood, and second type this is which occurs in adults. In childhood, most common reason for immune thrombocytopenic purpura, you have to know this is infections. Most common this is viral infections, like, for example, after influenza or after COVID or any type of um, respiratory infections can lead to production of the strong immune response. These autoantibodies attack thrombocytes and leads to thrombocytopenia. Those antibodies which is produced against one infection attack their own cells and these own cells is thrombocytes in case of immune thrombocytopenic purpura. 
What is the difference? This is self-limited. After, in, um, after the infection for a shorter period, patient has hemorrhages and bleedings and purpuras, petechias, and then, of course, this will resolve by itself. But it about usually, we, this is idiopathic. We don't know what is the reason exactly for autoimmune destruction of the thrombocytes, and of course, we need other treatments, steroids and other treatments we need just to treat this disorder. Usually this is more common autoimmune disorders in females. More commonly we have female patients with um, petechias, purpuras, hemorrhages, which we see under the skin. So this, you must be familiar with these disorders. Yes. PPT. Extrinsic, this is PT, prothrombin will be, prothrombin time will be prolonged in extrinsic pathway. I will discuss this, this is separate, I will discuss this in the whole, how to say, this is how this uh, um, coagulation factors are measured, yes? We will um, discuss this, and after this, if I will have time, I will show you this, okay? How we are measuring this. As you see here, this is Virchow's triad. This is what causes thrombosis. You have to know that in this triad, one of the main reasons for thrombosis is this endocellular cell injury. Anything that injures endocellular cells, this can lead to thrombosis. Multiple causes we have. This can be direct trauma, this can be immunological damage, this can be infl any inflammation can lead to damage of endocellular cells, yes? Any infection, so injury of the endocellular cells, this is one of the main reasons why thrombosis begins. This is very important. Second, this is abnormal blood flow. Stasis, for example. If blood flow is sluggish, not fast, yes? Of course, this increases chance of what? Thrombosis, this we already know, this is very important. Or we have narrow blood vessels because of occlusion. Occlusion can be, for example, because of atherosclerotic plaque, which occludes blood vessels. In this case, of course, risk of stasis, risk of thrombosis is high. Yes, this is very, how to say, important. And hypercoagulability. This we are teaching you in systemic pathology. Too many disorders we have in which, um, because of high co um, uh, coagulation factors, um, high number of thrombocytes, hypercoagulability state is a risk factor for thrombosis. Because our body tries not to develop thrombosis in normal case when we don't have any abnormality and you know that, for example, we have tissue plasminogen activator, yes, which activates plasminogen not to develop thrombosis. We have prostacycline, for example, prostaglandin I2, yes, which is responsible to block aggregation of individual what? thrombocytes, this is very important, yes, thrombomodulin and all this, so this is very important protection for us not to develop thrombosis when our body doesn't need this, yes, this is very important. Now, thrombi in different locations sometimes we have in different locations and different names we are giving. Thrombus, which we have in the heart, we call this mural thrombus. Mural thrombus, this is thrombus in the heart, what you see here. Okay? Mural thrombus, yes. M-U-R-A-L. Neural thrombus this is thrombus which occurs in the heart. Sometimes heart uh, thrombi uh, usually is very bad because it can lead to thromboemboli, systemic embolization, reason for systemic embolization. Sometimes this is thrombi in the heart, especially if we have arrhythmias, risk of 
fund realization, this I will discuss in the next lecture, is high. This is very, sometimes we have asymptomatic patients and in a one day because of uh, trauma, it can embolize and leads to systemic emboli. This you have to know and uh, really very important what we have to know. Next, what I want to discuss with you, and this is really uh, very, uh, how to say, important. What do you think? What is vegetation in the heart? If I have some real fun. One minute somewhere I have. Um, vegetations in uh, this is uh, we can have because of multiple small trombi in the heart or because of other reasons. But in this case, we I have to discuss vegetations, which is thrombotic vegetations. When Microtrombi is formed on the walls of the heart, we call this vegetation. Because sometimes we have also other reasons for vegetation. This is immune complex deposition, liver sacs, endocarditis. disease. This I will discuss in systemic pathology. But you have to know that one of the reasons for heart vegetation, this is microtrombi, what we have in the walls of the heart. Okay? Walls, yes. Now, very important part what I have to discuss with you. Trombi can be produced when patient is alive and also we have post-mortem trombi, yes? When patient is dead, of course, multiple trombi is formed. How we differentiate? For example, the reason for patient's death was trombi or this trombi was formed after the death of the patient. This is for autopsy, we have to know, yes? This is lines of Zen, what you see here. This is really very important part. If, if trombi is formed in living body while we are alive, yes? And the reason for occlusion was thrombus formation, this creates lines of sand. These lines of sand, why we have to know? Because these lines are produced because between these thrombocytes, erythrocytes are in the middle of thrombi, some erythrocytes, which gives different color in these sand lines. Again, when we see thrombi, it's not the same color some lines we have. These lines are because of erythrocytes and also some fibroblast accumulations because in the living body this is impossible only thrombocytes to adhere. When there is formation of the thrombus, some erythrocytes are also uh, inside of thrombus. This we call lines of sun. If you will see lines of sun, it means that the reason for the death of the patient was thrown by. It was formed before the death of the patient. Because post-mortem thrombus never contains lines of sand. Because it's not on living, usually uh, in blood flow stops, yes, of course, after the death of the patient. And of course, this is only thrombocyte balls and lines of sand we don't see. Follow? Sun, yes. Visually, some, some difference of color. Of course, you have to see this to magnify, but anyway, it depends how big is your thrombus. But even cross changes, you will see that not the same color, a little bit different. And these lines, you have to know that it was formed in living body. Sorry? <laughs> this is very, very, uh, how to say, uh, good question, but the whole systemic pathology, usually, I'm teaching you many disorders, why thrombus can, for example, I will tell you, if we have a thrombus in the coronary arteries, yes, coronary artery thrombus is infarction 
of the heart yes if there is complete occlusion of the coronary artery so it depends which artery uh, uh, occlusion we have it can lead to infarction is one of the reason for death of the patient sometimes of course yes it can occlude cerebral blood vessels and can lead to stroke for example yes it can obstruction leads to what necrosis of the tears and that's why thromboemboli emboli I will discuss with you um, in the next lecture this is when we have embolization from deep veins yes it can lead to pulmonary emboli and if this is big in rare cases it leads to pulmonary infarction but if this is saddle embolus and big, big emboli it can lead to also death of the patient so too many reasons we have it depends where it's from by and what kinds of complications it leads this is very important what I already told you this you have to know how to differentiate anti-mortem and post-mortem what how to see clots yes this is really very important part and of course in post-mortem will be weakly attached yes why because it's on that tissue not normal adherent molecules are expressed on blood vessels and of course easily you will remove from blood vessels also this is DVT as you see here deep vein thrombosis which can lead to thromboemboli and can lead to pulmonary embolus but this I'm teaching you in systemic pathology only I want to tell you that DVT is one of the risk factors for pulmonary emboli any thrombus can lead to embolization and this what you see here this is vegetation from by on heart what I was explaining uh, before yes you see multiple thrombi on heart valves no no thrombi must be on blood vessels it must be adherent to blood vessels if or it must be adherent to some tissues if this is freely movable thrombi we call emboli huh? structure same but embolized this is freely movable thrombus in the blood vessels when it occludes somewhere blood vessels this emboli becomes thrombi really of course yes thrombus leads to embolization it means that when it's no more adherent to the blood vessels and goes with blood flow it will occlude somewhere blood vessels this is emboli also we have as you see here Liebman sacs endocarditis in this case also we have vegetations but these vegetations are immune complexes by this I want to tell you that not all vegetations are thromboses some of them are because of immune complex what deposition fate of thrombus is different sometimes this is occluding sometimes not occluding sometimes it will recanalize and will lead to blood normal um, how to say um, blood flow and recanalized but sometimes it leads to embolization that's why we have to treat turn by as soon as possible if we can of course yes of course
Okay. Okay, we have to continue right now. Um, as I told you, the uh, main reason for thrombosis is either endothelial cell injury or stasis or hypercoagulability, yes. Too many disorders which we will discuss in systemic pathology, but here briefly I want to show you which can be the causes of hypercoagulability. Some of them are genetic causes. Not always we have acquired reason because of damage of endocellular cells. One of the common reasons for hypercoagulability this is factor 5 laden mutation. You have to know that mm, factor 5 becomes resistant to factor S and C. You have to know that vitamin K dependent factors, coagulation factors is factor 2, 7, 9 and 10 which is responsible for normal coagulation. But also vitamin K induces synthesis of factor S and factor C. Factor S and C is anticoagulation factors, opposite. Factor S and C binds to factor 5 and blocks this. Again, factor S and C binds to factor 5 and blocks this factor. It means that if we have mutation on factor 5 and it can no more it has it can no more adhere to protein S and protein C, it means that Always we have active factor 5 and ready for coagulation. Factor 5 and factor 7 are on extrinsic pathway of coagulation. Again, factor 5 made in mutations, this is joint disorder in which factor 5 is resistant to blockage of factor S and C, which is anticoagulation factors, which is produced by vitamin K. K action. Understand? One of the common is autosomal dominant disorder and patient develops multiple thrombi. This is very important. Increased level of some factors, factor 8, 9, 11, we have disorders, genetic disorders where we have this how to say reasons. Very, very dear protein C and S deficiency. Yes, of course, if you will have vitamin K deficiency, we know why we have the deficiency, but sometimes we have genetic deficiency or antithrombin 3 deficiency. You have to know that we have antithrombin 3 which blocks thrombin and of course if there is no blockage, thrombin is always active and leads to thrombosis. Yes, this is very hard to see important factors. But most important as I told you, this is expired reasons. You don't know how many um, risk factors we can have. For example, we can have hypercoagulative state sometimes when we have uh, cancer. Some, it depends what type of cancer we have, but we have sometimes situation when cancer cells by itself releases now, for example, factors which increases coagulability. This is very important. And it leads to, for example, we have uh, sometimes true so sign for some cancers. This we will discuss in systemic pathology when we have migratory thrombophlebitis. Yes, this is, for example, because of thrombosis. Also, always remember, if we have artificial valves, prosthetic valves is one of the uh, valves which we are uh, doing uh, and you have to know that prosthetic valves are one of the main sorts of thrombocyte what patient. This is very important. Antiphospholipid syndrome. 
this I will discuss also with you when we will discuss immune disorders with systemic lupus erythromatosis but you have to know that antiphospholipid syndrome is one of the way how thrombosis is possible yes of course fibrillation myocardial infarction immobilization so injury all these are the risk factors for thrombus formation but main reasons again as i told you is of course blood vessel damage, hypercoagulability and stasis. Also, always remember, cardiomyopathy and cardiomegaly, when we have enlargement of the heart, this is good source of thrombi. Why? Because when we have dilated heart, yes, of course, this blood inside of the heart can thrombose, coagulate and lead to thrombi formation. This is very important. Atrial fibrillation increases risk of embolization. Always remember, this is thromboemboli. Prolonged bed and immobilization. Of course, this is very easy. It will increase risk of thrombi. Yes, this is very important. Also, very important what you have to know that some drugs can increase risk of thrombocyte aggregation, oral contraceptives. Always remember, use of oral contraceptives increases risk of thrombi. Not high risk, but anyway, usually we have risk. Yes? All this we will discuss once again in systemic pathology. I only just wanted to show you what can be the possible reasons for you know, thrombus formation. Now, we have thrombi, we have bleeding tendency. If thrombocyte aggregation is affected, one of the reasons for thrombocyte aggregation, this is drug-induced blockage, yes? We know that heparin induces anticoagulation. How heparin acts? Heparin acts on antithrombin-3. If you already started pharmacology, we already know, yes, and of course this is reason why heparin induces anticoagulation. This is very important. But you have to know that heparin has complication also. We know that heparin we don't use for a longer period. We begin with heparin and then other uh, oral anticoagulants we are using. Heparin can um, induce most common complications. This is heparin induced thrombocytopenia. But the reason for thrombocytopenia, this is a specific, um, how to say, um, antibodies which is produced against heparin. Always remember, when we are uh, giving heparin, sometimes heparin binds to thrombocytes and thrombocytes express platelet factor 4. This is very important. And this type of um, how thrombocytes are cleared in the spleen uh, and it leads to thrombocytopenia. Again, when heparin binds to platelet factor 4 on thrombocytes, sometimes these thrombocytes are cleared in the spleen by splenic macrophages and this, this leads to thrombocytopenia. But in very, very rare cases, you have to know that heparin usually induces thrombocytopenia and not thrombosis. That's why we are giving, yes? This is anticoagulant. But in very, because in your book it's, um, there is explanation and you have to know what is this. In very rare, don't expect that this will happen, but you must be ready in some patient it happens. Heparin can induce thrombosis. What is this? Sometimes when heparin binds to platelet factor 4, as you see here, this heparin platelet factor 4 binds to B cells. Specific antibodies is produced which binds to those platelet factor 4 which is already bound to heparin and this binding activates platelet factor 4 and platelet factor 4 activates thrombocytes and leads to thrombosis. What I want to show you is that 
we have several pathways. In most cases, heparin excess anticoagulant can cause anticoagulation while we are giving this. Sometimes it leads to thrombocytopenia because of increase of clearance by splenic macrophages, but sometimes when heparin binds to platelet factor 4, yes, this platelet factor 4 activates platelets and leads to thrombosis. Rear, very dear. Always when we are talking about heparin, we are talking about anticoagulation. Heparin is thrombocytopenia. But I don't know, in your life maybe there will be one or two cases about this and you have to know. Next. Now I will discuss with you what I skipped in previous, um, how to say, now you have to know what is the difference between purpura, purpura and ophimosis, this is only the size of hemorrhages, yes? Of course, you see that propyhias are the smallest, yes, less than usually 2 millimeters in diameter, purpura and echimosis, this is bigger. For example, we have disordered thrombocytic, thrombocytopenic purpura. You already know that this is very small, yes? If they will tell you that this is, um, how to say, uh, echimosis, this is bigger. So even from the name, you can guess what is the size of these hemorrhages. Now, I will show you some pictures, what I skipped in, because I was in a hurry to manage to explain all these things. This is what I already uh, teach you, this is edema, yes, on different parts. We can have edema, lower leg edema, periorbital edema, pitting edema in the lower uh, legs, and as you see here, this is anasarca. Always remember, anasarca is generalized edema. Too many reasons we can have for anasarca. For example, one of the reasons for anasarca can be, for example, we have a uh, disorder, if you are familiar, I don't know, this is thalassemias, yes? And alpha thalassemias, four steps, this is hydrops fatalis. In this case, no alpha chain is produced at all, yes? And of course, it leads to abnormal hemoglobin formation. And very briefly, I will tell you that really uh, this um, hemoglobin capacity, capacity to deliver oxygen to the tissues is very low because of abnormality of the alpha chain and it leads to hypoxia to most tissues. This is usually one of the reasons for microcytic anemias. And of course this hypoxia also, the hypoxic liver they do have. And before the birth of this basis uh, of this um, uh, patient, this hypoxia decreases liver function. Liver stops formation of major proteins. One of them is albumins, we know, yes? Hypoalbuminemia decreases oncotic pressure and it leads to generalized edema. Edema everywhere, including brain. Brain edema, this is what uh, uh, we afraid because it leads to many complications. You have to know what is the difference between local edema and anasarca. Too many causes, but this is one of them. You must be, how to say, familiar with this. Uh, of course, we will have many um, complications about this. This is, as you see here, this is hyperemia or congestion? What do you think? This is hyperemia, yes. This is... Yeah. This is liver congestion, not med liver. Very good. Now, always we are talking about edema 
and this is usually demo what I was explaining but also we have a lymphedema what you have to know lymphedema because of lymphatic blood vessel obstruction or inflammation lymphedema this is where we have increased permeability of lymphatic blood vessels but we call this lymphedema because this is around the lymphatic blood vessels this I showed you because this is one of the very good example of this. This is elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is this lymphedema which is caused because of mosquito bite. Some mosquitoes sometimes when they are infected with Wuteria bancroftis, this is the pathogen which of course leads to inflammation of the lymph nodes, lymphedema and the leg becomes huge. This is because of edema fluid. This is very difficult just to treat, but elephantiasis is acquired disorder. You have to know this is because of bite of mosquitoes, usually female mosquitoes bite, yes, which one, which is smaller, not bigger ones, yes, and you have to know that this is um, one of the examples what is in your book and I'm trying to explain what you already have in your book to be easier how to say uh, for you to understand. I want to discuss with you if I didn't discuss anything. This I will discuss in the next lecture. This is thromboemboli. This is real picture of the saddle embolus in the, um, how to say, lungs. This is pulmonary emboli, vegetations, fate of thrombus. Okay. If you have any question, because we discussed today thrombosis, we discussed today hemorrhages, we discussed today coagulation, cascade, we discussed several disorders. You must be familiar with Grassmann's thrombocytinium, Bernard Sawyer's disorder, hemophilias, von Willebrand's disorder, yes? Thrombosis, what is the difference between the anti-mortem and post-mortem thrombus? What is bleeding time, partial thromboblasting time and prothrombin time? So, how we are measuring this? You must be familiar with intrinsic, extrinsic pathway and thrombocyte aggregation, how this happens. And what causes thrombi formation? What is vegetation? and edema. If you have any question, because next, next lecture will be about thromboemboli, about infarction types and uh, infarction and about shock. In your midterms also everything will be including including today's lecture. Mm. From next lecture, I will not include thromboemboli. No, this will not be. Uh, this is in your how to say syllabus is written everything. Yeah. By high typing, you know, I don't. When you will see emboli, yes. After this, you don't have. Sorry? Before embolism, yeah. After embolism, no. you know why I decided this? Because the truth is this huge material to give you four seconds in time. That's why it's better to give you some thrombosis like this in this midterm, because second midterm, you need to go, then it's dissolving. All this happens, it's too much for you. For your other life, yeah, please. Sorry? How are you? Tell me what you're saying. 
don't see it. Why are you seeing this? Uh, I don't know, they told me that they will um, do this live lecture on YouTube, it will be, but I don't know where how I got. They told me you have to New Vision University on YouTube and then, then I don't know. You have to know. You have to do it. Sorry? I don't know, just now they told me. Okay, this is good if somebody wants to learn to be listening. Okay. Good luck, all of you.